to the Sister City Board being reorganized. I think we have one more meeting to appoint some members. And our Sister City in South End on Sea is hosting its second annual street painting festival inspired by Lake Worth on September 8th. Um, I was ex very pleased last night that we were moving forward with the economic development rates for electric and that our rates are going down approximately 10.8%, I guess is what we're projecting, um, in working with our electric rates. So I was very, very pleased about that. And the pool, happy to hear that we're going to be working towards finding a way to open it. Um, even if it's part-time, temporary, something so that we can um, move the pool. Um, I do look forward to an update regarding the internal auditor. I was very disappointed to hear after two months of um, Mr. Maxwell's your negotiations that we didn't get any updates until last week when he was uh, then he withdrew his candidacy. So I'd like to hear what what happened with that. And um, I hope that everyone that came to speak on the item regarding the heights stays. Um, it is an important issue and it does affect the future of the city. So I'm sorry that you have to wait until the end of the meeting. My voice will be heard regardless. Mr. Um, I want to take my liaison time to send my condolences to the mother that lost her life on H Street and to her family. Mm -hmm. um, it was a horrific thing, and I just want to uh, send my condolences, and uh, that's it. I would do the same, too. Thank you, Commissioner Amoroso. Um, we're all one community, no matter what. Please keep that in mind, okay? Commissioner McCoy? Um, I would just uh, like to comment a little bit on the issue of what our community looks like and how we achieve that. Um, I think some of you who are here and some who are listening have, have heard for a while that, that our community needs economic growth and economic development. I think we're all in agreement with that. Um, I certainly am. I think everybody up here is. And in that context, it's been clearly brought to our attention by our professional staff that we need to have a very clear legal environment for developers to come in and know what they can do in our community, what they can't do, um, such that they can move in, a, in an expeditious way to develop in our community. And I think uh, it's pretty clear that we've had a kind of messy LDRs, land development regulations, zoning maps, and charter amendments, all sorts of things that were not very consistent and were confusing. It did not make it easy for developers to come in and do things that enhance our community. And, and there's been a good push over the last two years, particularly, to, to try and bring that all together. The piece that I think we've perhaps lost sight of a little bit is that on the one side it's very important for developers to have a clear path, a consistent path. They can look at it and say, if I do this, I will get approvals, I will meet with approval in the community, and I will enhance the community. That needs to be there. At the same time, what we put in those regulations has to be very clear in reflecting what the community wants. This is our community. This is not somebody else's community. We need to be making our wishes for the community very clear. So as we write those land development regulations and the zoning maps and the charter amendment and building heights and setbacks and all the pieces, we need to keep our eye very tightly on the ball. It needs to be a clear package and it needs to be something that has very broad support in the community. And I believe it is our responsibility as a commission to make sure that we go the extra mile to make sure that there is, in fact, support for whatever it is that we put on paper, such that when developers come in, they know they can sail right through and that we get something that we all feel enhances our community, we feel good about, and they feel good about putting investment here, and it's a win-win all around. But to get to that point, we have to, we have to, as a commission, go the extra mile to make sure that we know what the community wants. And what I'm hearing very clearly from the community is, at a very minimum, please allow us to vote on what our downtown looks like in the way of building heights. And it concerns me greatly 
that we've made a choice up here as a commission to not do that. And I would like to make sure that we find some way to find a different way to address that and make sure that that we really have it's in all of our interests. It's not in our interest to move forward with move forward with a divided commission that is trying to push something through that maybe has a narrow set of support in the community but does not have broad support. That will come back to bite us in one or another way. And I don't think we want to do that. I think we want to go a little slower, make sure we know what our community wants, make the effort to find that out, and, and then incorporate it. We will be a stronger community and a community, as, as you mentioned, Mayor, a, a community that is, in fact, pulling together if we do that extra effort. Vice Mayor. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just one thing. I'll, I'll reserve my comments on, on Mr. Uh, McVoy's assertion that we wouldn't let the people vote for later. I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the internal auditor, which seems to be uh, piqued uh, Commissioner Mobile's interest in such a, a strong way. I have reached out two or three times and commented through the two months uh, about the progress of, of those negotiations. Unfortunately, the candidate uh, for that position was about thirty or thirty-five thousand dollars apart in salary. Okay, we negotiated for a number of hours over a couple of different days, and the decision was left up to him. And ultimately, he decided that he was unwilling to uh, uh, to meet or accept the terms, the financial terms that the city was prepared to offer. So again. We're about thirty or thirty-five thousand dollars a year away annually. Unfortunately, the previous commission, previous commission majority, had only budgeted a certain amount of money for that position, and that's all we had to work with. So that's, in a nutshell, the story. Now, if any members of the commission have any specific questions, I'd be happy to entertain them at this time. But it's unfortunate that we weren't able to come to terms. But uh, the facts are, are that we could not reach the financial demands of this particular individual. I do have a point. Thank you. Um, what was the what was our top offer? Ninety-eight thousand dollars. And so he was looking for basically one hundred and thirty-three. He was looking for one hundred and thirty. Um, okay, one hundred thirty. And and you mentioned Commissioner Maxwell that that you felt constrained by the budget provided by the previous commission. How high are you prepared to go to? Uh, offer to an internal auditor. That's really irrelevant at this point, Commissioner, because all I had to work with was what I had to work with. So right, but I'm, I'm so that we we know that we in fact are on the path to get an internal auditor. How high are you willing to go? It's not not my decision to make. It was a decision of the commission to make, and that decision will be brought back when we put this out to, to bid or put out to to uh, advertise in the future. But uh, I only had so many tools to work with, Commissioner and um, we couldn't come to terms. There's a report. I guess I would put in a vote that if we're serious about wanting an internal auditor, I would hope that we would look at what the market rates are for a first-rate internal auditor, and that this commission either decide that they want an internal auditor and they're willing to pay the market rate for a first-rate person, or that if we're not willing to pay the market rate, then we simply say we can't afford to do it at this time. Either way, Madam Mayor, yes. I just want to say that on that point, since I came back to the Commission in 2009, I have strongly supported and encouraged this Commission and this Administration to bring an internal auditor to the, to, uh, to the City Hall. And each and every time, up until last year, those efforts were rebuked. So to assert that we're not interested, the community is not interested in having an internal auditor, is a falsehood. Okay, I have always supported having an internal auditor. I have fought for an internal auditor, and previous commissions have fought against it and would not put it, fund it in the budget. So for the record, we finally had an opportunity this year in the budget to fund an auditor at $98,000, and we were unable to reach the terms with the man that we selected because we were $30,000 apart. That, in the long and short of it, is the situation we're faced with today. Our charter requires an internal auditor. Correct. <laughs> Okay, repeat that. Our charter requires an internal auditor. That's correct. Okay. Previous commissions... This this commission decided to hire an internal auditor, so I don't know why there's dissension and this entire meeting will not be adversarial on every issue because we have other issues that on our minds. Okay, we all chose to hire an internal auditor. We all were part of that process, so please, let's be respectful about it. This is, again, not contentious issue. We didn't come to an agreement. I'm hoping and I would encourage this commission to go back out and put out an RFP for, you know, for, I mean, put it out again. We need an internal auditor. It's required by our charter. 
and we're going to get an internal auditor if, if this commission chooses to do so. We did last time, so I don't see why there's a problem or a discussion. Sometimes contract negotiations don't work out. This one did. We need to look at the budget or whatever, but we're looking at making budget reductions everywhere else. I don't see how we could come up with any more money right now in the situation that we're currently in, but that's a discussion we shall have in public, decide what we're going to do, and continue the search, because we need an internal auditor. But if you put a salary out that's lower than what the going rate, and we were off by 30000 then we're essentially saying that we don't want that. Well, we will look at that. Again, quiet the chambers, please. We will look at that, and we'll get staff to look at it and come up and see what we have to do differently this time. But why are we, why are we arguing about this? We all we, we were looking at entire... So let's go back. We're going to place blame on it when we all were sitting here at the same time. We looked at the RFP. We looked at the, the job. You didn't know any different. I didn't know any different. You didn't know any different. Let's stop arguing about something we all want. Next item. Uh, Sorry, we've got a commission. Public participation of non-agended items and